start talking about the, the electron microscopy, public image archive, Empire at EBI, and then Matthew will talk about the, the bioimage archive uh, also at EBI. So I'm giving this talk on behalf of uh, Ardan Patwardan uh, as well. So Ardan is the person who founded Empire uh, about 10 years ago. Um, and uh, it has it has grown considerably since then, as as you all uh, as you all see. Uh, so we we are now well, the the image is almost out of date. Uh, so we we are over one and a half petabyte now. We we reached the first petabyte in June uh, last year, and and we'll be reaching two petabytes uh, uh, later this this year. So it, it's uh, it's it's big data. Uh, that we're dealing with, all, all related to electron microscopy in 3D. Uh, just for, for those of you who may not be familiar with, with uh, EMBL and, and EBI, uh, so we're the European Bioinformatics Institute in, uh, in Hingston near Cambridge in the UK. Uh, we're the European home for anything having to do with biological data, for services, research, training, etc. Um, we're part of the of EMBL, the European Molecular Biology Laboratory, which is a uh, uh, an intergovernmental research organization with laboratories in, in five different countries in, the, in Europe. And the EBI has, has five missions all to do with uh, biological data, but the one we we'll talk about uh, here falls in, in the scientific services uh, part. So at EBI, uh, there are a huge number of, of biological data resources in areas from literature, genomes, all the way to, to, to systems uh, biology. Uh, and there's also the, the, the image-related uh, archive, so there's Empire and, and the Bioimage Archive since, uh, since three years ago. Um, so but it's, a huge, uh, it's a huge context of, of biological data resources that, that can all be linked into uh, to the imaging archives as well. So it, it, it gives us uh, uh, an additional benefit by being located at the EBI. So there are four uh, archives at EBI uh, where the EBI is either running them or involved in the management uh, that have to do with, with either structural biology or with, with, with imaging at, at, at uh, larger scales. Uh, those of you with a structural biology background may be aware of the, the protein data bank. This is where atomistic models of proteins, uh, complexes, nucleic acids, etc., uh, can be archived and, uh, and retrieved. We also host the electron microscopy data bank, and this is where uh, cryo-EM and cryo-electron tomography uh, data, maps and tomograms can be, uh, can be archived. Um, we have Empire, where we store raw data for cryo-EM uh, experiments, but also have started to archive three-dimensional three volume EM and, and X-ray microscopy uh, data sets. And finally, the, the bioimage archive, which Matthew will tell you a lot, a lot more about. So Empire stands for Electron Microscopy Public Image Archive. It's been around for, uh, for well, since uh, 2013 and has grown from just four small entries in, in 2013 to, to uh, almost 800 entries now and more than uh, one and a half petabytes of, of data. The data is all CC0, which means there is no license or anything. You can download the data and do with it uh, as you please, anything you like. You can even start your own archive and, and uh, uh, distribute the data yourself if you, if you like uh, if you like to. Um, what we store is raw to the image data from from cryo electron microscopy and tomography experiments, but also increasingly three D volume maps from from volume electron microscopy and, and X ray microscopy, both hard and soft X ray, uh, and a number of other techniques. Uh, it was really the establishment of, of Empire was in response to uh, questions from the community or derived from the community that, that there was a need for such an archive, particularly in the cryo-EM uh, world. So that's how, that's how it started. And that's why we started archiving raw cryo-EM data. Uh, the data is used for many, many different things. So we just thought it would be for, for validation and software development, but it's being used for in teaching and training uh, settings. There's many software pieces of software that have a tutorial where the first step is download Empire entry one, two, three, four, five. Uh, for example, uh, software developers, it's very useful resource for them because they can test the software on data from microscopes that they, they, they may not have in-house, for example. Uh, there have been community challenges uh, where multiple labs do the same thing on the same data using their own software or standards and procedures. And the data can also be stored in, in Empire. So there's many different, different uses. Uh, and as 
uh, Matthew will explain, we're, we're sort of powered by the, the infrastructure provided through the, the Biomets archive at the EBI. And there's also an international uh, component, it's all still developing, but we have a mirror site in Japan, which also brokers uh, depositions from Japanese uh, scientists. And there is a resource uh, in California, which redistributes the, the SARS-CoV-2 data sets that we have in, in Empire. So just to show you the growth, how we started from very small beginnings in 2013, in terms of the, the number of entries and in terms of the, the size of, of the archive. And the, the growth is, uh, as you see, well, it's, it's, it's still uh, very rapid, uh, but in particular from 2019 to 2020, it was a huge increase. And this, we think, has to do with the pandemic because a lot of people uh, did not have access to their microscopes in <coughs> 2020. And so they dug out a lot of their old data sets and processed them and, and deposited the raw data in, uh, in Empire. But even in 2021, this, when, when many facilities were, were running again, the, the number of uh, entries that's been deposited and released still increased compared to 2020. Uh, and so you see that last year in 2021, the size of the total archive more than doubled in, in just one year's time, right, from 700 uh, terabytes to, to this uh, 1.5 uh, petabyte. Um, so some of the entries are, are big. Uh, the, the biggest one we have at the moment is, 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 is almost 75 terabyte. Uh, you can see here the distribution also of the number of files. So th there are entries that have a million files, for example, but, but most of the entries, let's say half the entries are, are less than 2000 or so files. But so this, this is big, big data generally. Uh, so yeah, so this is the, the current distribution of, of the, the, the entry sizes. Uh, half of the, the data sets is, is, is less than half, half a terabyte, and the other half is more than half a terabyte. So it's, again, it's big, big data. And the average size, depending on the imaging modality, is shown here. You can see particularly for, for, for uh, EMDB means that it's a, a single particle, usually study uh, that has the map archived in EMDB and the raw data in Empire. The, the average size of the entries has, has increased almost linearly since, since 2017 and is now uh, at about three terabyte uh, on average. Uh, we're not only growing in terms of the number of entries and, and the total size, but also we're expanding the scope. So we started out with uh, only archiving raw data that belonged to, to, to cryo-EM and electron tomography uh, studies that were also at their maps and tomograms archived in EMDB. But soon we got requests to, to archive some, some FIPSEM and SPFSEM uh, data sets, and then some correlative data sets. Um, and there's a whole bunch of miscellaneous uh, things that, uh, that we have begun to, to archive. Uh, we expect, there's something that, that, that we expect to get uh, in, the, in the near future, hopefully, so some data from citizen science projects ground to segmentations for machine learning applications. And then of course, there will always be the, the unknown unknowns that we can't foresee yet. So I looked uh, yesterday, the, the distribution, it's about 10 to one, the, the cryo data sets and, and the volume EM and X-ray microscopy data sets that we have. But you see there's, there's quite a variation of, uh, of, of modalities in, in the, volume, uh, the volume area. Um, and it, it, it's growing as well. Oops, sorry. Okay, so I'll give you a few slides with just some examples of, of entries that we have, just to give you a you know a taste of the, the kind of data sets that, that we have in uh, in an empire. And th this first data set is one that you also see behind me. Uh, and this was a, a 2D uh, EM data set on, on SARS-CoV-2. This was our first SARS-CoV-2 data set that came out in, in April uh, 2020, so quite early in the in the pandemic. Uh, it, it's two images that have been stitched together from, from smaller 2D images. So the, the images are 100,000 by 100,000 pixels. So they're, they're really big. Uh, if you want to inspect them, you can go to the, uh, the image data resource, which, which uh, Matthew will, will mention as well. Uh, but if you want to download the data or the raw data, so if you want to do the, the stitching with your own algorithms or develop software for that, you can get the, down, the, the, the raw data from, from, from Empire. Uh, there's, of course, cryo data sets, both uh, single particle and, uh, and tomography. Uh, so uh, there's a whole range of techniques uh, that, that we cover. Uh, and this is just for the, for the SARS-CoV-2 data. 
the data is also uh, indexed in something called the COVID-19 data portal, which is a resource that the EBI manages, which contains very easy access to all data, all biological data uh, in EBI that's related to, to uh, COVID-19 and the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So it, it, it's gen genome sequences, uh, protein sequences, uh, interaction data, uh, protein structures, and also uh, uh, image, uh, image data. And this is this uh, resource I mentioned earlier in, uh, in California, where they, they uh, redistribute some of the, the data that we have, in particular the, the SARS-CoV-2 data sets. Uh, some more examples. So there's, there's some correlative uh, uh, data sets where, uh, the, the, in this case, the, the soft X-ray tomography data on the left and, and the volume EM data on the, on the right goes, goes to us. But the, the light microscopy data goes to the to the bioimage uh, to the bioimage archive. So we have links to, to that, so you can you can get uh, both both types of data quite uh, you can access quite quite easily. Um, we have you know, plant data up to medical research data, no clinical data, but or patients identifiable data. But it, it's a whole range of different uh, uh, sample types and uh, and applications. Uh, we have some benchmark data sets. Uh, so this is an SPF SAM data set from, from Lucy Collinson's uh, lab on HeLa cells. Uh, and this is a data set which actually went with a, uh, a chapter in a book on correlative uh, microscopy. So this is the person who wrote that, that chapter, Alan Weiner. Uh, he deposited some EM uh, volume data in, uh, in Empire and some uh, imaging data, uh, light imaging data in uh, the bioimage archive. Uh, and so if you download those two data sets, they're, they're quite small, then you can work through this, this, this chapter in, in the book and, and follow the examples. Uh, in terms of length scales, we have everything from atomic resolution, single particle, cryo-EM data, up to uh, whole organism uh, data uh, on the platin areas, for example. And again, this, this is correlative data, so you find uh, uh, more data in the, in the biomass archive. Uh, we have some uh, machine learning uh, data set uh, as well. The, this 7500K is 500,000 small uh, images from a variety of, of different uh, EM data sets, 2D and 3D that have been uh, collected uh, that, that should be of help in uh, developing deep learning applications. And also since uh, last year, we have uh, two uh, uh, X -ray, hard X-ray tomography uh, data sets. And these are actually very nice because they contain uh, a very com uh, complete set of data. So you, you can get the tilt series. So you, if you want to do the reconstruction yourself, you can. You can. Uh, you get the reconstruct, reconstructed 3D volume, so that's what most, as a biologist, probably you're, you're most interested in, and also the the, the segmentations of that uh, of that 3D 3D volume, and there's also machine learning uh, training data uh, has been deposited, so it's it's a very complete uh, data set, very very nice. Uh, uh, and just to show how, how you, you know, if you go to the entry page for one of these, these things, um, so this is one of the hard X-ray data sets. It, it's very easy to, to download using a variety of, of, of ways, FTP or Aspira or Globus. Uh, you can download whole data sets or individual, uh, individual uh, images or individual files quite easily by selecting them. And if, if we find a 3D volume, one or more 3D volumes, then we also provide a link to uh, what we call a volume browser, but it, it's really a, a, slice, a slice viewer, as it were. So this is a quick way for you to have a look at the data without needing to download anything uh, or to install uh, software locally. So this is in your browser. It's a quick, quick way to look in you know, Z-planes or, or Y-planes or X-planes. Uh, uh, you can change the, 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 the contrast and everything and select which plane you want to look at, either by clicking or by, by, by selecting it uh, here. Um, so the cross archive links, I mentioned both the bioimage archive and, and IDR. Uh, so for correlative data, um, we, we, the principle is we archive now and, and we integrate and visualize later. So you can get the, the light and the EM microscopy data from, from us and from the bioimage archive, but we, we don't yet have any facilities to, to view those two uh, together in, in your browser. But this, this will come in, in the future. Uh, so we think it's better to, to start archiving the data and then later we can uh, we can tie them, tie them together. 
we also have uh, one or two entries where we have a link to to, to this uh, IDR in, in Dundee. Uh, and there, the, the idea is that if you want to view the data in detail with annotations, uh, then you go to the IDR website in, in Dundee. If you want to download the data or the raw data, uh, you can come to, to Empire. Uh, so the Empire website, it's very easy, empire.org. If you want to deposit data, you click on this button and you'll be taken to the, the deposition system. Um, <clears throat> you can browse the, the whole collection of archives in this table on the, on the front page. You can type the text and it will do a, a, just a simple text, text matching. So if you type the, the name of an author or, or a protein or a technique or whatever, you will see all the, all the, the entries that, that match that, that, that string. Um, if you want to do a bit more advanced searching, then I'll show this in a minute that there is a way to do it via the IMDb uh, search system. And as I mentioned, downloading individual image, images or entire data sets via Spira Globus FTP and also through your, through your browser if you just want to look, download one, uh, one plane uh, and for example, one image and then look at it uh, with, with your own uh, local, uh, local software. Um, so as I said, we can use the EMDB search system as well to, to look at the, the Empire entries and you click on this link on the, on the homepage, there's a video tutorial as well that in two minutes uh, summarizes how this, uh, how this works. And if you click that, you will get, you will seemingly be on the EMDB uh, uh, website, but you will only see the entries that are uh, in Empire. And then you can use these facets here on the side, like you know, when you're on Amazon, uh, you can select by experiment type or year of uh, release or uh, cross links to, to other archives like, like the BioRidge archive, etc. to narrow down your search. And if you find an entry of interest, you just click on the title or the, or the, the, the identifier and, and you will go to that, uh, to that page. So for example, here I've clicked on, on, on this facet, so only showing the, the Empire entries that also have data in, in the BioRidge archive. So these are, these are all correlative uh, experiments, as you can see here, uh, with data in the Biomets archive and EM or X-ray data in, in Empire. Um, if you're on an entry page and you want to have a very look, quick look at, at an image, if it's in a format that, that, we, that we understand, uh, then we prepare thumbnails. So you can, you can mouse over and if this, the cursor turns to an eye, you can click and you will get a, a thumbnail image of that particular image and with these arrows, you, you can then go through an entire uh, data set, uh, if you like. If you just want to have a very quick idea of what, what the data looks like. Uh, on the other hand, as I said, you, you can also download an individual uh, image uh, to, your, to your computer. So you select here and click download, and then you select the way in which you want to download it. And then you can open your favorite uh, image uh, viewer or analysis program and, and, uh, and do with the image what, uh, whatever you like to do. Okay, so in, in the future, as I said, we, we started out archiving cryo EM and cryo electron tomography data in particular. Um, but we now have a grant uh, for a number of years that will allow us to, to uh, start working on archiving uh, volume EM data. Uh, and so we organized a workshop in, in December with uh, about 45 people. Uh, archiving experts, but of course specifically volume and EM experts and also software software developers uh, to try and figure out what are the needs of the volume EM uh, community in terms of archiving uh, and what, what are their requirements in terms of uh, uh, data deposition uh, and the data model. So what, what should we allow, what should we insist on, on capturing in terms of metadata, for example, and what should we allow in terms of, uh, of, of deposition. Uh, also, on dis dissemination of data, so what formats are common, uh, is API access uh, necessary, and, and data streaming uh, to, to maybe, so you could have a, a viewer on your, on your laptop or your desktop, which could get data from Empire uh, on the fly, uh, probably in, in one of these new next generation file formats. Uh, which, which, which uh, allow you to, to, to zoom in, as it were, so you can start with a, with a, uh, a faraway look on, on the whole data sets, and then you can zoom in on an area of interest and you get more, uh, more and more high resolution uh, data uh, sent to your, your application. So those were the kinds of questions that, that we 
ask these these experts what what are the scenarios that uh, that they foresee and and what what we should uh, support as a, as an archive to uh, to make this uh, possible. And finally, we talk, also talked about segmentation. So in in structural biology, uh, we said you know we saw that if you have a cryo EM uh, map, you can build a, a model of a, of a molecule into that, and you can deposit it in the protein data bank. But in low resolution uh, imaging. It's it's not possible to, to to build structures, atomistic structures of, of proteins. But what people tend to do is, is to, to segment out uh, data, so different whatever, complexes, bits of cells, whatever, the nucleus uh, or ribosomes. Uh, and these segments are uh, identified, reach or region of interest in, in, in 3D are identified uh, and colored and you know, given uh, assigned to a particular biological uh, uh, object. Uh, the problem is that these things take a lot of time, a lot of work. Uh, they usually show up in, in one or two nice figures in, in a paper, and then they're, they're lost. Um, so what we would like to, to do is, is to encourage people when they deposit their, 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 their volume data, if they have segmentations, to also deposit those, and maybe even the, the biological annotation, so they can become searchable um, in, in, the, in the future. Um, and so we asked again the community experts, you know, what are the needs and the requirements if, if we want to start archiving these, these kind of uh, segmentations and, and their annotations. So as I said, we had 46 people, three half days in December with a couple of breakout groups and we got some very good feedback and we're currently working on a, a white paper summarizing the, the, the outcomes of the, of the meetings and then we'll start planning how we're going to implement uh, all the, the recommendations in these three, three areas. So what's this space? There's a lot of interesting stuff ahead and many of these developments will probably be in collaboration with, with Matthew's bioimage archive, uh, of course, because <clears throat> there's no point in reinventing wheels and definitely not reinventing wheels if, you know, if there's a perfectly good uh, wheel in the, in the next office or if we can develop a new wheel uh, together. So we will definitely be, be doing that. Okay, so I think we want to keep the questions until after Matthew's talk as well, right? So I, I will stop here. Just acknowledge again, Adam, who's been the, the, the brain behind uh, Empire. Uh, we have uh, 1.5 annotators, so Simone is full time and Osman is, is, is uh, 50%. And we have uh, three, three developers on the poll and, and three of them who develop uh, the software, the website, the tools, etc., and also provide technical support to. Uh, to uh, particular to depositors uh, and you can find us at, at this URL. Uh, there's, there's a link there to, to the help desk uh, as well. And you can follow us on, on, on Twitter and also we'll, have, we'll be launching our YouTube uh, channel soon. So I will stop here.